hardware testing and monitoring performance, built-in tools for troubleshooting and testing. Let's start with talking about some of the workstation providers like Dell, HP, and Lenovo that actually ship with tuning and advisor apps or optimizer apps. These are totally worth looking at. I have worked with all three of these companies on these mini applications, which will keep an eye on what applications are running and make changes at the low system level, resource level, uh, to make sure that these applications are running at their peak. In some cases, they even make BIOS level changes. So totally worth checking out and just wanted to mention that. Using performance tools from Windows and Mac are a pretty common practice. So Task Manager on Windows, and of course, as you see here, Activity Monitor on Mac for monitoring CPU and GPU usage during playback. You can clearly see that the CPU threads are not doing a lot of work, while the Radeon 5500M has got a pretty heavy load working on the Lumetri effects that are on the timeline. And the CPU is wide open to do other tasks. One of the most important tools that you'll use inside Premiere Pro when you're monitoring is an engineering mode that we call dog ears mode. And it's an overlay system which will overlay readouts on top of the program or source monitor. To toggle this on or off, make sure that the video is not playing back. And on Mac, you're going to press Command Shift F11. And on Windows, you'll press Control Shift F11 and then hit the space bar to play back. The first thing you'll notice is the rendering system will pop up and it'll tell you in this particular case that it's using Apple Metal and the primary graphics card is a Radeon 5500M. That could change, by the way, if I plugged in an external GPU and maybe it was a AMD WX9100. I want to make sure that I'm using that card for playback and this will reinforce that information for me. Of course, if I'm on Windows, it might say NVIDIA CUDA. And of course, if I turn the GPU off, then it would say software rendering system. Again, a great way to reinforce what resources are being used in the system. It's also a way that we monitor dropped frames during playback. And you'll see that the down sample size here will tell you that in this particular case, it's at one. That means it's at full quality. And on the last line, I find this one particularly useful. It tells me what codec is currently playing back because if it's a mixed timeline and those codecs change, that information will change as it's playing back. And it's a great way to reinforce the, what's happening on the timeline. You'll particularly find dog ears mode handy when you're monitoring shared storage or network storage and trying to figure out if it's a problem on the network and you're dropping frames. This is a great way to figure that out. Of course, any local drive or RAID, you can use it for the same thing. A few key components can make or break performance and keeping up to date with new chipsets every few years is a great idea. A great example of these chipsets that change is Intel QuickSync, which has changed a number of times over the years. QuickSync, as you know, allowed us to do H.264 and HEVC playback early on for drone footage and phones and lots of different cameras that were out there. And it actually took a heavy codec and made it usable in an editing scenario. Of course, it only worked on certain Intel combinations, of course, Core i5, 7, and 9s, and some Xeons, and you really needed to understand which systems had Intel QuickSync. It's a little bit less of a problem today for playback of H.264 and HEVC, as well as rendering and export, because we have recently added NVIDIA CUDA and AMD to that, so any of the three of these can now handle this, which is great news. And again, these are some recent changes, so keeping up to date is a great idea. On the Apple side, we take full advantage of Apple Metal, work very closely with Apple, working with their T2 chip and their afterburner card. Some great advancements there. Here's a quick slide that will just show you that over the years, Gen 9 versus Gen 11 graphics getting better all the time. So trying to keep up with what's happening with QuickSync and even other technologies from NVIDIA and AMD, always a good idea selecting GPUs, particularly important to know a number of things. How many displays are connected? Very common. We see customers with three and four displays. Sometimes it's better maybe to have one ultra wide display and one additional display for full screen output. Are they going to be using lots of effects and are they GPU effects? I think we can all agree there's lots of changes on all this technology in the last couple years. 
the amount of memory on these cards will make a huge difference during playback, especially inside of After Effects. And one of the things I wanted to point out is to make sure you're recommending cards that support DirectX 12 for lots of changes that are coming for 10-bit pipelines. On the Macintosh side, we started uh, Afterburner support their FPGU card. We started support with Premiere Pro 14.3. The things to note on the Afterburner card as of today, it currently only supports decode and playback for ProRes files, in particular ProRes 422 and ProRes 4444 inside Premiere Pro and After Effects. We do not yet support the Afterburner card for ProRes RAW, but the ProRes RAW is GPU accelerated and gives excellent performance.